Hey there guys, this is, oh hang on a second, wait, wait a minute, uh, fit the box in, there we go, hi, <laughs> hey there guys, this is NDM here, welcoming you back to another episode of Let's Play Legend of Zelda, a minish cap, I was about to say Legend of Zelda Link to the Past for a second there, alright, so now we're in this dungeon, we basically just got to the third dungeon, the Fortress, um, Fortress of Winds I think it's called, and I will be leaving tomorrow, so I won't be recording any episodes tomorrow. There will be no uploading going on tomorrow either. Hmm, so you think the ruins were hidden within this cliff the whole time? Watch your step, Elvis. There may be traps in here. Right, so <laughs> apparently there's traps up ahead. Ooh, yes, what joy. What lovely, sweet joy. Right, so there are three uh, intersections or three areas you can go to at the beginning of the dungeon. Um, there are other areas like out that way, but you can't get to them obviously because there's this weird stuff blocking our way, so we can't get through it. All right, so we're going to go to the middle one first, I think. Yeah. All right, we'll see what's up here. Oh, right, there's a gigantic chest above us. All right, so let's see what's inside. Oh, damn it! No, we got statues. Right, so let's take care of these with the bow and arrow. Get our bow out, boy. Get your bow ready. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, hang on a second, I'm being gang raped by Dalfos and statues. Right, so let's go get our chest. Well, I might as well kill both of these actually, because then it'll um, make things a little bit less troublesome for me to get around the dungeon, because. Like, the the statues, once you've killed them, they stay permanently dead, whereas the Stalfos, they don't. They respawn when you go out of the room and then come back in. I think they do anyway, I'm not sure. Anyway, we've got ourselves a dungeon map. Lighter rooms are ones you visited. The blinking room is your location. Press up or down on the control pad. Yeah, apparently that Final Fantasy game that I got um, the other day, Revenant Wings, is not an actual turn-based RPG game, much like the other Final Fantasy games. It's basically a... Yeah, that Final Fantasy game is not a turn-based RPG game. Sorry, I just made a cut then, and we've got dead end up here, so we can't go that way. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, Final Fantasy is not a turn-based game. Apparently, it's a it's a strategy-based game throughout the whole entire game. But you do like these missions, but it's like a f it's a, it's got a lot more action in it. Mo the game is mainly about battles. It's not really about exploration because you don't get as much freedom in like exploration. It's just like a battlefield kind of game where you command your monsters to attack other monsters it's but like you don't actually move the character you have well it, you kind of do you have to point where the character moves but you don't actually move him yourself as he moves across the screen you don't move him like that you point to where he wants to move and then you basically choose a location where you want the person to move and then he'll move there but you can also like summon monsters as well, and you can also move your monsters around on the battlefield and choose which monsters you want to attack other monsters. Um, yeah, it's actually quite a fun game from what I play of it. It's just really hard, and I've never played a strategy-based game before. I'm not very familiar with how they work, but I'm kind of adjusting to it, and I think over time, when I've played the game more frequently, I'll get more accustomed to it. Alright, so we've got more stealth rows in here. Great. <laughs> These things seem to be appearing everywhere. Holy crap. Alright. Uh, I, I, I remember this room. I think this room has a bunch of like-likes in it, so make sure you're careful when picking up the rupees. And it's, I think that one's a like-like, so don't bother picking that one up. So always the one that's in the corner, and always the one that's the red rupee as well. So if you see a red rupee in an odd, suspicious place like that, don't go and pick it up, because it will... 90% uh, of the time, be a like-like. Yeah, 90% out of 100 it will be a like-like. <laughs> and I hate these choo-choos as well. Yeah, remember these from the Cave of Flames? Well, they made an appearance here too. And I think that's this is the last dungeon they actually appear in. I don't think they're in the Sky Temple. Yeah, not sure. Alright, so let's get our bow and arrow out here and shoot the eyes. In between the eyes. God, I haven't played Conker in ages. That's the quote that I got it off, Conker. It's just that my cartridge isn't working. It's like the it's my least it's the least functional cartridge that I have in my N64 collection. 
I mean, I got it when it first came out, but I've literally abused the cartridge to the point it can't even read anymore. <laughs> it just doesn't want to work. Well, it's kind of uh, understandable for a game that old to not work properly. Right, is this the right... I uh, know it's not. We need one to be there, I think. And then one to be at the far end. I think that's how it will work. I don't know. We're going to find out anyway. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, it is. And these switches awaken the statues, which is not good. But no fear, we have our bow and arrow to take these things out. Oh, damn it. Wow, he actually dodged it. Okay. <laughs> Apparently these things can jump over your arrows. I don't know how they can, considering they're so big and they only jump like one centimeter in the air. Anyway, nonetheless, we've done it. And we shall pick up our just rewards, which is a compass. you got the compass. Use it to find the locations of hidden items. Press start and then the L or R button to view the map screen. Alright, so let's have a look. I don't think we've actually looked at our map properly. Um, but yeah, this is quite a big dungeon, actually. <laughs> uh, come to think of it. I don't remember it being this huge, but... Uh, there are much bigger dungeons later on in the game that we'll be coming up against, so... Better get used to it. <laughs> like, people say that the dungeons are the best part in Zelda games. To be honest with you, I don't know. I do like dungeons a lot in Zelda games, but I also like the overworld exploration in Zelda games, like finding new things, looking for heart containers, doing side quests. That's why I love Majora's Mask so much, because you could do so many things at so many at, at so many different points in the game. You like you could have like once you beat the game, once you beat Stone Tower and all that, and um, you still haven't done most of the main side quests. You know, you still have a lot of things to do, so your options are more open in that game because it's mainly because everyone says Majora's Mask is 90% side quest and like 10% story or something. But yeah, that is true. Majora's Mask is mostly about side quests. Because you've got all the mini dungeons to do, and you can do those at any time um, once you've accessed that point. And when you can do the dungeon, you can do it at any time, whenever you want to. You don't have to feel forced to do it. You don't have to be... You don't have to do it at a specific time. You could just go in there whenever you want to and do it. That's why I think that game is more openly and more f and has more freedom to it. So you can do things at your own leisure and at your own pace. Hmm, did something just fall down or was it just my imagination? But, like, some of the side quests in Majora's Mask were really tough, you know, like the Anju and Cafe side quest. But once you've done it, like, so many times and you know what you're doing when you do it, it's actually quite fun to do it. Um... Especially, well, that's probably the most emotional side quest in any Zelda game I think I've ever done. Because <laughs> it's so cute when Cafe and Anju reunite because they've been apart for so long. And it's kind of like a long distance relationship. Because Cafe is living, um, living on the other side of town, but he can't be noticed as a child because people would freak out. And. You know, Anju wants him back no matter what, but Cafe won't listen to her, and that's when, you know, when you re when you give her the pendant, it makes her realize that sh that he still wants to be with her, and then she finally realizes that it's right that they should be together, and then you have to go and reunite them by bringing the sun mask to the moon mask, and then that creates the couple mask. The most hardest mask in the game to get, <laughs> in my opinion. You gotta do so much crap for that. But then again, the postman's hat is also equally as hard because you have to do the same side quest over again just to get a different outcome. So it's like you're kind of getting the couple's mask twice, in a sense, because you're doing the same quest over and over. You're doing the same you're doing the same quest twice to get a different outcome and get a mask from it. So it's like you know you're getting the couple's mask twice. <laughs> So I guess you could say the Postman's Hat is also, in a sense, the hardest mask to get in the game besides the couple's mask. Because you still have to do the same stuff. Alright, okay, we've got statues guarding the switches down here. 
I've also picked up Hyrule Warriors as well. I haven't actually played that yet. I should have mentioned that yesterday, damn it. <laughs> Consider I'm recording Zelda, you know, it's like a Zelda themed topic. I could have told you guys about that, but I completely forgot about it. But yeah, I also picked up Hyrule Warriors. I haven't played it yet because I haven't really had the chance to. Uh, I've been mainly playing f uh, Final Fantasy and um, uh, Phantom Hourglass. I I'm actually surprised the fact of how fun Phantom Hourglass actually is and how much of a good game it is because I've not played that game in many many years and I picked it up yesterday and I started playing it and I had quite a lot of fun with it. I didn't really think Spirit Tracks was that good of a game, uh, that good of a Zelda game. I don't think it was as good as Phantom Hourglass. Phantom Hourglass was ten times better. And why did I just do that? I should have went into the statue, because the statue's asleep. We need to wake him up so then he'll come and charge at us, and then we can kill him and access the switch behind that he is guarding. Which is what we're going to do right now. But yeah, Phantom Hourglass is a good game. It's just that I think it's better than Spirit Tracks. I just thought Spirit Tracks didn't have that many dungeons, didn't really have that many quests to do, or not that many fun quests to do anyway. Yeah, I didn't think the side quest in Spirit Tracks was that fun. You know, where, where you have to catch all the rabbits and stuff. Uh, and it was a short game too. There wasn't that many dungeons, like I say. There wasn't really that many side quests to do. Whereas in Spirit, whereas, whereas in Phantom Hourglass, I had like f eight dungeons, I think, maybe more than that. I I don't know. I know Phantom Hourglass had quite a lot of dungeons. I had more than what Spirit Tracks had. Spirit Tracks only had four dungeons, and they weren't really that fun to do. But Majora's Mask only has four dungeons. But then again, it has a whole load of side quests, which make the game fun. And they were fun side quests too. They weren't boring or anything. <laughs> right? Did we just get pick yeah? We just picked up two keys, right? So now we're going to go to the middle part of the dungeon because this is pretty much where the main activity of the dungeon will take place. Now we don't have to go up those two stairs ever again. Because now that we got the two keys, we can open up the two doors that are right here. So we shall do that right now. Uh, get away from me. Oh, you know what? I'm about to die. Do I have any fairies? I doubt I... I highly doubt that I do. <laughs> if I do, then I'm in for some serious luck. Uh, yeah, I do have a fairy, actually. In mean, one of my bottles. Surprisingly. Alright, so we're going to go up this way first. Oh, dude! Don't go overtaking the platform that you're on. You don't want to go doing that. You're going to end up falling in the eternal pit of darkness. But your soul will be enveloped by the darkness and never to return ever again. <laughs> Alright, so let's get our bow again. Oh no, yeah, I forgot about those. Damn it, War Masters. Or Floor Masters, whatever they're called. I think they're called War Masters in this game. Uh, not, the Floor Masters are what are in Wind Waker. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, no. I'm not sure if they were called Floor Masters or War Masters in... No, Floor Masters, yeah. Floor Masters in Majora's Mask or Ocarina of Time. You know, the hands that fall from the ceiling. I don't know if they were called Floor Masters. Maybe I'm just getting my enemies confused. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. I think this is actually going to be a sub-boss here. And this is where I'll end off the video once I beat this guy. I mean, it's, a, it's a Iron Knuckle, Dark Knight, whatever you want to call it. And this one's much tougher than the one we fought in Castle Wilds, if I remember. Yeah. I hate these things in this game, because they have such good defense tactics, and you don't really get that many hits in on them. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> Hold still, will you? And it, uh, I know I'm going to die and, and waste my fairy on this guy. be no way... So what you gotta do, you have to, you have to jab in when he jabs at you. So, because he gives like a one second break before he starts using his shield again to defend. So like he'll stick his sword out for like a second, but that's when you're supposed to attack, like that. But you have to get your timing like literally dead on perfect. That's why I hate these bosses. Can I try using my bow and arrow against them? Maybe that will work. Highly doubt it though. Because he has a shield. 
bombs would work, I imagine, but... Oh, there we go, we've done it, never mind. <laughs> okay, that wasn't too bad. Stop complaining, dude. That was easy. Holy crap. Alright, I'm gonna recover some health, if there is any health in these skulls, maybe. No, nothing. Not diddly squat. Wow. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm gonna end off the video here and continue on next episode. So, in the next episode of Let's Play Legend of Zelda... Minish Cap, we shall progress on deeper into the Fortress of Winds. So until then, this is NDM saying thanks for, thanks for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>